A young adult presented himself in a clinic. He explained that he has non-itchy skin rashes and sores on some parts of his body, including his mouth, throat, and genitals. Doctor asked him about when he first noticed the symptoms. He replied that he noticed the symptoms about two months ago, when it started with a painless sore. He is worried that it may be something that he got because of being sexually active recently. After thorough examination, the doctor noticed bold patches had appeared on different parts of his head, and his lymph nodes became swollen. The doctor sent the man's blood to the laboratory for diagnosis. The diagnosis result confirmed his fear. The man was suffering from a bacterial disease called syphilis. Syphilis is a primarily sexually transmitted disease passed on to a partner by a person infected with Troponema pallidum. Troponema pallidum is a spirochete, which is a corkscrew-shaped bacterium. It can transmit asexually too, from mother to infant and through blood transfusion. It can also transmit asexually in communities living under poor hygienic conditions. Syphilis can be diagnosed through blood or serum of the patient by enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, ELISA, and Venereal Disease Research Laboratory, VDRL test, along with some other tests. ELISA checks for antibodies of the bacteria in the blood, while VDRL detects antibodies in the blood of the patient by using a cholesterol antigen. This method is also known as VDRL antigen in an alcoholic solution. The signs and symptoms of syphilis occur in three stages. These stages are as follows. Stage 1. About three weeks after infection, a painless sore appears at the site where the bacteria have entered the body. In men, it usually occurs on the penis, and for women, it happens within the vagina or on the cervix. The sore may disappear in a few weeks even without treatment. Stage 2. About two to six months after infection, signs appear on different parts of the body such as non-itchy skin rashes and sores that are located on the mouth, throat and genitals. The sores are called chancres. Bold patches may also appear on the head. The lymph glands may become inflamed. These signs again disappear after some time, but the bacteria remain dormant in the body if not treated until the third stage of the disease. Stage 3 in the third stage, the internal organs become affected. This is the most advanced and final stage of the disease. Patients may suffer from heart failure and blindness. The brain and spinal cord may be damaged, resulting in paralysis, insanity, and even death. Syphilis could be cured at all stages if prompt treatment is sought. Now, can you guess which stage the man was on when he presented himself in the clinic? The doctor immediately contacted the man and prescribed him antibiotics, in this case, penicillin. He also asked him to refrain from intercourse and trace contacts with whom he had intercourse so that they can be treated promptly. This will reduce chances of an epidemic. He also advised the man to limit sexual partners to just one and wear a condom during intercourse. In April 2019, at a small village named Ratadero, Mr. Jalbani brought Ali, his six-year-old son, to a hospital to check for the possibility of HIV infection. The father did this after he saw his local pediatrician rummage through the trash for syringes. The pediatrician then used the second-hand syringe to treat the boy, despite his father's protest. After a month, the father took his boy to another clinic because he heard that some of the 900 children who were affected by the HIV outbreak had seek medical care from the same pediatrician. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficiency Virus and is primarily a sexually transmitted disease. Even though the six-year-old showed no signs or symptoms of acquiring HIV, the doctor on duty sent the child's blood for testing in the laboratory. An infected person produces antibodies in response to the HIV around 2 to 12 weeks after exposure to the virus. The test can detect the presence of these antibodies in the blood, but cannot test for HIV itself. The blood test came back positive. HIV destroys the body's immune system and causes AIDS. AIDS stands for Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome. Normally, when foreign particles such as bacteria or viruses enter our bloodstream, our white blood cells are able to identify them and destroy them accordingly. This is how our immune system protects the body. However, HIV acts by destroying the victim's immune system. 
The body is unable to produce sufficient white blood cells or antibodies to provide the immunity needed to protect the person. This is how the virus earns the title immunodeficiency virus. The infections, which are normally mild, may prove to be fatal to a person with AIDS. The signs and symptoms of AIDS include chronic fever, severe diarrhea lasting for months, pneumonia, and cancer of the blood vessels, or Kaposi's sarcoma. It can also cause brain infection and widespread tuberculosis. AIDS is called a syndrome because it is a disease with many symptoms occurring at the same time and is usually fatal. Most patients die within two years as treatment is not that effective. Needle sharing, reuse of infected needles like in the above case, are not the only way HIV can be transmitted. As mentioned before, it is primarily a sexually transmitted virus and can spread through sexual intercourse with an infected person. It can also spread through blood transfusion if the blood is acquired from an infected person and not properly screened prior to donation. The virus may also transmit vertically. During pregnancy, the virus may pass from the infected mother to her fetus. In this case, the child will be born with the disease. There are drugs available that restrict the attachment of HIV with the host cell or stop it from replicating in the host cell. Such drugs are collectively termed as ARTs, or antiretroviral drug therapy. In the above-mentioned story, after receiving the boy's diagnostic report, the doctor prescribed the child ART drugs and is on his way to recovery. He also advised him and the father that in the case the boy develops AIDS, people can shake hands with him, share toilet seats, and bathe in the same pond as him. AIDS also does not spread through coughs or mosquitoes. Care should be given so that syringes are not reused. The other children in the village should also be tested for the virus. Thank you for your continuous support, especially our valued patrons and members who have been encouraging us to keep producing more quality content.